Come with me. Come with me to discover the secrets of how thoughts become things, and we will manifest like never before. Come with me, and we'll discover a secret so powerful that will take you far beyond your dreams. Come with me on an unforgettable journey. Come with me. It's already yours. Get ready for this adventure. And I'm thankful for today that you found us. So get ready. The time is now. I'm Zelda Kelly. Welcome to Secrets Laws of Attraction. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Secrets Laws of Attraction. I'm really excited to bring this next episode to you. The name of it is Your Magnificent Obsession. That's right. It is an obsession that you can treat with magnificence, but it is your obsession. And we're going to talk about what exactly that is. But I want to start off today by thanking you for stopping by and coming here. It's not by accident. You were looking for this. And I want to thank you because if it weren't for, here, for you being here, <laughs> I wouldn't be either. So thank you. Thank you so much. So the last two episodes we had, the first one was talking about the reticular activating system. That is the RAS. That's that nucleus in the back of your head, at the, at the skull level, the top of your spine. And then we talked about, in the last episode, the intention switch and what happens after you set that intention. But today I want to add a few little things onto this. You may need to listen to this one more than once and maybe even more than twice. I just want you to know that you have it in you to receive what it is that you deserve, your blessing. I, I am positive that you are going to turn things around in your life. And okay, they may not be so bad, but why not have things be fantastic? So I want to, I want to start this by telling you that it is a scientific fact. Science says that every seven years or less, you have a new body. New cells of your body are made from the nature of your thoughts. So our cells basically shed themselves. They transform. And that's why we have to have positive thoughts because that helps our health, our well-being, our physical and mental well-being. And that is an amazing thing, isn't it? Because I'll, I'll tell you something. Our bodies are made of 50 trillion cells. That is equal to a capacitor, a capacitor like a radio capacitor, and a resistor. Now you get this whole thing about frequency. Now this is starting to make sense, isn't it? Here's what else makes sense. You have 1.71 volts of electrical potential in your body. That's enough to light up something. You may as well light up your way. And I, I got to tell you, that is an amazing, an amazing thing how we are created. It's beyond our belief. It's beyond anything that we can really fathom. And yet, that's who we are. And what really is amazing is that we don't stop and think how we can utilize all this power to live a better life. It's not so much to gain better things or better riches, but my goodness, you sure do function a lot better with a smile on your face. 
knowing that you can handle whatever's coming your way, good, bad, or indifferent. And I can tell you, the more that you practice this law of attraction, laws of vibration, laws of manifestation, all those 21 universal laws, the more that you start practicing this, the more you're going to avoid potential issues, pressure, problems, financial problems, health problems, you name it. So I want to start by sharing, and I'm going to be sharing a few stories to me, hello, or today, you know, hello, that's me, you know Aunt Zelda here. <laughs> and by the way, I am Zelda, Zelda Kelly, and I want to thank Psychic Secrets for sponsoring this Law of Attraction series. I think this is wonderful. This is something that we need, and I'm very honored to be able to do that. And I want to thank them. And you can stop there by their website and take us out, take a take a test drive, check us out. Look at the blog. Look at the podcasts that we have. You can view past podcasts. You can act actually make a request for content. You can interact with the blog. That's really pretty cool. I like that too. There's a lot of really, really good information on the blog and something very much to learn every day. And you can actually talk to an advisor. You can see the advisors that we have online. I am an extension 11, but we have many good advisors on there. You can chat, you can call, and you can actually do a video call. How do you like that? That's pretty nifty. So we're there to help you find the direction and the confidence and the positivity that you need to be able to function in our daily lives. Okay? So now, thank you very, very much there. We can go on to that website at www.psychicsecrets.com. That's www.psychicsecrets.com. So I want to tell you, a, well, I may tell you two or three stories today, but the first one I want to tell you is about this, and this is my chair that you're hearing. My apologies to you. I know, I know. I have to manifest a new chair, don't I? Yes, I think I will. Okay, so I want to review a few things with this reticular activating system and our intention. And we'll be doing that along with what's happening. What's happening with you. Okay? But in the meantime, I want you to know that there are harmony cells that we have within us. Our thoughts, feelings, and belief all connect. And they all connect us through the service of a cell. We are told in our culture that we are not powerful, yet we have a powerhouse within us. Power lies everywhere else, but everybody thinks that, well, we're not powerful. Look where we came from. Look who created us. That is why our thoughts, because of the power within us, that is why thoughts become things. And we talked about that in the last episode. you got to be able to manage your thoughts. You need to align your thoughts and feelings and words and actions and your desires with the right frequency. Remember, we are the same as a capacitor and a resistor. We need to recode our mind. That's hard to do. But we need to do that. We have already been born with this power. You already have it within you. It's there. You just already have to tap into it. Okay? I'm going to quote Albert Einstein again. And I did in the last episode, but I paraphrased him. But now I'm going to quote him. And he basically says, Everything is energy that's all there is to it. 
match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot help but get that reality. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, he goes on to say, it can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. I love that. And for those of you, I would write that down. In fact, I would look that up and I would frame that. There is no other way. There is no other way. It is not philosophy, but it is physics. What's the physics part of it? That we are all energy. Energy vibrates in different capacities. Meaning, the slower the vibration, the more solid something comes. The higher vibration, the more something becomes a little bit more invisible. So, the table that's in front of you is vibrating at a particular vibration. And yes, everything vibrates. If you put, there's a, there's a particular machine, and I don't know what the name of it, and I'm sorry that I don't. I should have looked that up in my pro and my my bad on that one. But if you put that on an inanimate object like a table or a chair, your computer, oh the dresser, the kitchen table, the sofa, everything is vibrating in different speeds, in different motions, and you can see it as well as we do. Ah, so it's all now starting to make a little sense. So here's story time. In 1954, there was a movie come out by the name of Magnificent Obsession. Now, this movie was based on a 1929 book. That 1929 book was written by a pastor by the name of Lloyd C. Douglas. Now, that book did not go over very well with the critics because this was a new idea. But that pastor had an idea, and it was loosely based on a love story, but he knew that's how he could get his story out and his, love, and his, and his story across. There was a remake of a 1933 film. They actually made it into a film. And then in 1935, Universal Pictures picked it up and called Magnificent Obsession with Irene Dunn and Robert Taylor, based on the book. So in 1954, now this is my favorite version, Version it has Rock Hudson, Jane Wyman, Barbara Rush, and it is absolutely, I couldn't take my eyes off it, of it. But there's one part with this one gentleman, and he's played by Otto Kruger. These names I love, don't you? And he talks to Rock, Rock Hudson in this particular movie. Now the plot is about this playboy type. And it's Rock Hudson, and he doesn't have a care in the world because he has so much money. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Jane Wyman was married to a doctor who had an accident who needed a resuscitator. And because the playboy Rock Hudson was out on a lake acting a little foolish, got into an accident, he needed a resuscitator. Jane Wyman's husband, the doctor was unable to be revived. So there was guilt there. There was all kinds of different things that going on in this plot twist and so forth. But the point I'm getting at is right here. In this one part, you're going to love it. He tells this one gentleman, Otto Kruger tells um, Rock, Rock Hudson, when you establish contact with the power source, you can fulfill your destiny. 
Now he goes on and explains this, and I love this analogy, and this is why I'm telling you this, because it's going to round out this whole episode of power and energy and what it takes. Number one, why do you think you get chills sometimes? That's your energy. Okay? When something happens and you hear something really good and you get the chills, good or bad, you get the chills, that's energy. That's energy coming from your body. So the analogy that he gives in this movie is, say for instance, you have a lamp sitting on the table or on the floor. You turn on the switch, but the lamp doesn't go on, doesn't go on, doesn't turn on. Because you have to have that lamp plugged in. Where is it plugged in? It plugs into the wall socket, who the energy goes through down to the powerhouse or the electric company, and that electric comes through the wall, through the plug, and up to the lamp. So the energy is there. If you're turned off or unplugged, it doesn't mean that the energy is not there. It just means that you're not plugged in. The switch, remember the switch that we talked about? That switch, the intention switch, is not turned on, is not flipped. The moment that you can flip that and tap into that power and tap into that energy, lo and behold, you can write your own ticket. And that's what it's all about. And I suggest if you can get a copy of or you can every now and then some of these classic movies they they come out magnificent obsession you can look it up if you can get a chance sometimes YouTube has it they take it down for copyright whatever the case may be if you can rent it watch it if you're interested in this sort of thing and a really really good story and a really really good movie and yes it's from 1954 but it is in color and I know Zelda Zella get with the times they call me Zella, okay? So Zelda, Zelda, get with the times. So, I want you to keep that in your mind. The next time you turn on a lamp, you're going to think about this, or turn on a light switch, you're going to think about this. If you're not connected to a power source, which is that power within, which is that power from our Creator, ain't nothing going to happen. And this is why people get so frustrated and disappointed and down because they think all it's going to take is just one day. Oh, I read this story or I heard this. Now, tomorrow I'm going to have the car sitting in the driveway and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. And it's not about that. It's not about that at all. As we talked about in the first episode with the reticular activating system, this is not so you become rich. Becoming rich is a benefit. This is so that you can be in service to others as well as enjoying your own life. How wonderful would it be if we could say, look, I want to have the deepest pockets going and those pockets filled with money so I can help others. And the more you help others, the more you are helped. That's the way it is. Now, this is dangerous stuff. Don't do any of this. Don't be giving so you get, because your heart's not going to be in it, and it's not going to work. So I want you to remember this. Plug in your source. Flip that power switch of intention. Now here's really another part of this movie that I love. And they go on to talk about how this doctor that passed away, who did not have the resuscitator that Rock Hudson had to use, he helped people, but he did it on the sly. If you can hear my kitty, that's Bilbo. My apologies. He likes this story, too. 
Sounds like he's plugged in, doesn't it? <laughs> if you can hear that, my apologies. Back to this. So, the fact is, this doctor helped other people without letting anyone know what he was doing. And if people said, I want to pay you back, he would say, no, 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 no. You're not going to pay me back. You're going to pass it on to the next poor devil. Now, that's what they said in the movie, and I know that that was kind of an expression back in the 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s, but we're not going to say that. We're going to say to help all of mankind who are in need. That's what they did. That's what the magnificent obsession was. And as the movie went on, some other things happened, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but Rock Hudson turned, around, turned his life around and became a neurosurgeon and kind of saved the day, and everybody fell in love, and it was happy days are here again. <laughs> okay? But he did the same thing. He helped people in secret. And I want you to know something. That is biblical. Matthew 6, 4 basically says, it tells us, it tells us, help in secret. I'm going to paraphrase this. We are to help others in secret. So we are not the, like those hypocrites who stand on the corners and say, oh, here I am. How many times have you seen that on social media where somebody says, oh, I helped so-and-so and I helped so-and-so. But you know what? They weren't thankful at all. They didn't say anything. I always want to say when I see a post like that, well, why did you help them to begin with? Did you help them so you could be thanked? Or did you help them because they really need it? I want you to think about that. So we are to help others in secret. And that is such a wonderful and splendid thing that we can do. Because it is such a blessing. Now, there was another movie, and I know that most of you remember, I think it was Helen Hunt was it was in this movie. And Mel Gibson, I think, I'm pretty sure. And the little boy who used to see dead people in that movie, The Sixth Sense. I don't remember his name, but you'll know who it is. It was called Pay It Forward. And it started a movement. I remember this here in the United States where it just seemed like you would go through a drive through and the person ahead of you would pay for yours and then you would pay for the person behind. And you know, to this day... I still try to practice that. And this is something that I want you to try to practice too. Now, I think that this can be a magnificent obsession. When you help people and when you become in service, this powerhouse doesn't automatically, but it's certainly better to turn that switch on. Why? Because you're taking the focus off, oh, of poor me, woe is me. And you're putting the focus on someone else who really is having an issue. Let's face it. We can be going through things, but then when we look around us, there is always someone who is going through something worse than what we are. And we need to be grateful and thankful. So, now... My question to you is, what can your magnificent obsession be? When you plug into that power of house and you turn on that switch and you become in service, because this is, even though this is about you, the wonderful benefit that will come from this is that it becomes a benefit to all those who are around you. Not only will they see this lovely person that you are with this wonderful attitude and a willingness to help anyone, and I'm not talking just about in finances. Look, if you don't have some uh, finances to help somebody, good. 
give them a smile at the grocery. I mean, after all, look at the time we're living in. People need smiles. Help someone carry their groceries and load them up. Babysit for someone. Give someone a break. Buy them a coffee. Buy them a donut. Clean someone's house that hasn't been feeling well. Give somebody a ride. You get the picture. You get the picture. You don't have to make this your obsession in that regard, like this movie. But what you will obsess over is not the negative. So it will not be this, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? I don't understand. Why? Why? What is going to happen? How is this going to be? I just don't know. I can't stop thinking of him or her day and night. Now that's an obsession. And when you can turn that, when you can turn that around, believe me, my darlings, you're going to start vibrating in a different way. Your energy levels are going to be raising. You're going to be giving off this beautiful, wonderful energy. And guess what? That attracts. You will be attracting those people who are supposed to be in your life. And more importantly, it will be you getting away from those who well, really aren't so good for your life. And after all, aren't those the people that get you in trouble, cause you harm, spend your money, hurt your feelings, break up with you? I think it's very important that we keep an eye on what it is that we do. Now, I'm not saying that we have to discard people or disregard people. That's not what it's about. What I'm saying is your life will change. And for those of you who are looking to be in a particular situation, to go in a different career, to have different things, those people that you need will be placed in your life and they may stay permanently and they may go after a time but they will also be serving their purpose I want you to to know that many times I hear in readings oh Zell I this is just all about me why can't this person be this and I does do they know that they just need me do they know this? Does this person, does this girl know that she needs to be in my life? Or does he know that he just needs to call me? And you know what my answer is? They don't need to do anything. And that's why they don't know it. And if you can work to get yourself on that perfect energy, that frequency... Those people that you want in your life, if they are also in that same frequency, they will come to they will gravitate to you. That's what it's all about, opening the frequency up for other people. If they're not, they're not going to fall away. It's not going to be hurtful to them, to you. You're going to understand that they have a different purpose, just like you. And you have a purpose, and that's what it's all about. So your magnificent obsession may be, look, I want to go to law school. I want to help those people who can't afford a lawyer. Or I want to be a surgeon, or I want to be a dentist, or I want to be the best clerk at the store and help others be able to save money. I want to work at a grocery store and I want to deliver groceries. I want to do this. You see, not only does it help yourself, but you're helping others, which, believe me, you jump the ladder. You raise the rung. You get promoted by the universe much, much quicker than if you sit back and say, well, I want this person and I want this and I want that. And is it no wonder, out of desperation, out of lack and want and need, 
that you're still sitting there by yourself. And I know that that hurts your feelings. Some of you are, that are hearing this, you think, oh gosh, she's talking directly to me. Well, I had to have this talk with myself a few years ago before I became introduced to the laws of attraction. I've been there. I know how hurtful it is to experience so much loss and so much hurt in your life. It's not fun and it hurts. But this is a way for you to turn it around. And I hope the quicker that you do, the quicker you're going to start seeing the many, many changes. It's all about the energy, my friends. It's all about how to change the energy within you. And I'm talking about, think about this. Because some people say, I didn't know anybody had an energy field. I didn't know you could do this. How do I know I'm on the right frequency? How do I know somebody else has a frequency? Well, I want you to take a minute and I want you to look down at your telephone. And when you call someone, you're calling that person's frequency. Get it? Oh, bless you. My kitty just sneezed. Did you hear that? <laughs> so, I want you to remember that everyone has a frequency, whether it's a telephone, whether it's an invisible frequency that we have to get onto and start vibrating in that fashion. Remember what Albert Einstein says. Remember, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It is an impossibility for you to fail unless you're asking for something that is not according to His will, that isn't good for you. And I will tell you right now that when you get into this, the first thing you're going to say is, look, I want to be in His will. Because I'm going to tell you, it's pretty hard when you're not. And it doesn't feel good. And when you're being spanked by the Father because you've got to learn some lessons, believe me, you're going to get on track. And you're going to ask what is it for me? And I can tell you, my darlings, that's exactly what you want. Because he's the one who can make this happen. Even when it seems like it's the most impossible thing in the whole world, get on that frequency and you will not fail. So it can be no other way. Remember what Albert Einstein says? This is not philosophy, this is physics. As a human, your emotions have a lot of power. Why do you think that they call it the will? Will power? You have a lot of will power. Boy, that person has a lot of will power. They were able to finish. 10 years of college, I could have never done that. That person has a lot of willpower. They lost 100 pounds. That takes a lot of will power. Separate those two. Instead of just thinking, glazing over, willpower, willpower. Will, it is your will. What is a will? It is your intention. It is your emotion, your thoughts, your desires. And you're putting that power with it. Oh, you become an unstoppable. The human emotion actually will change our DNA. Now, you will still stay recognizable as the person that you are. But your DNA changes into a very, very positive being. The science is incomplete. Because they, we really don't, as a scientific community, we really do not have a way to measure a thought or willpower. We only measure it by the results that we get. Science only describes how we function. 
there are many things that science cannot explain about the human human about the human being the one the most important thing here and we talked in the last episode about this once again it's the heart but what now and that is the grateful heart is a magnet for miracles think about that i've said it before stop praying for what you don't have start giving thanks for what you do have god already knows what you don't have and i can tell you right now he is putting people places and things in place to make your life better you just have to be thanking a lot you can bring things together by thinking it about but you can bring things to you by thanking it about get it so now you're using your willpower and you know that your heart that heart muscle that has the memory he is a magnet that heart of yours he is a magnet for miracles it's wonderful it is a it is a, a, it is a miracle actually that we know these things it's also really important that we bless the things that hurt us. Why? Because we'll get over it a lot quicker if we say, you know, that hurt, okay? But bless that time because I learned a lot of lessons during that and now it's time to be thankful and move on because I know I have a lot of other blessings to deal with. Our world is a mirror of what we have become with from within. Let me say that again. Our personal world is a mirror of what we become from within. So if we get up in the morning and we get grumpy and we stub our toe and that starts our day, we go outside, we have a flat tire, we spilled coffee on our best shirt, we have egg on our tie. We have mud on our shoes. We get in the car. Now the car won't start. We have a flat tire. A car won't start. We spilled all this stuff. And you can imagine the rest of the day. Our world is what we are reflecting. Because what happens is we get so powerful on what is happening. We can't stop and take a breath and start laughing. Because believe me, laughter chases the devil away. If you take a breath, if you're going through those days, if you take a breath and you just sit back and say, okay, oh, okay, this is okay. I'm getting through it. Believe me, you're going to live over stubbing your toe and spilling egg on your tie. Change your thoughts within and you will change the mirror of the world around you. We have to choose the place to, that changes our bodies. Now what place is that? A place of harmony. And when thoughts and emotions join us as one. Now this is, this is energy. This is energy. This is it, my darlings. This is what we came for. When thoughts and emotions join as one, now you have that frequency now you can plug into that powerhouse. You can flip on that lamp switch that's in the back of your reticular activating system and set your intentions. Look out. You are going to be a vibrating machine. Now we talked about yesterday or last episode. As a man thinketh in his heart, so shall he be. Well, I would like to think that I'm on a really good vibration today. So stop praying for what you don't have. Stop thinking words like, Oh, I just need that. I need that guy to call me. I need that girl to accept my invitation for a date. And I need, I need. I got to tell you something, my darlings. 
When you start talking like that, you're telling the universe and your emotion and the vibration and the frequency that you ain't got it, that you don't have it. And and the emotions and the thought process and your reticular activating system and that switch does not know the difference between positive and negative. So that's why you got to feed it the positive because that's what you're going to get. So when you're praying in lack, that's what you're going to get. So you can sit around and say, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, and I need. We create our world out of our thoughts and our words. We, if we start using I am, we now have a core belief of ourselves. I am. Those are powerful war- words. That's what God says. That's what, how he described himself. Now, I'm not comparing us to God. What I'm saying is you're taking on that power. Here's something, another little another little thought that I want to give you by Thomas Wilson. He that will not command his thoughts will soon lose the command of his actions. So I'm going to tell you, your thoughts can steer you into a wrong circumstance or situation, and it happens all the time. Well, I was just thinking... Didn't you ever hear your parents when you were growing up? What on earth were you thinking? (laughs) I just heard that in my mother's voice. What on earth were you thinking? Well, like we talked before. We take our thoughts of facts. Oh, well, that's I thought, so it must be the... Well, that person isn't going to call me. I wish I had a nickel. For every time someone called me and said, Zell, I I know what you're telling me, but I just don't think so. Well, good. If you don't think so, it ain't going to happen, darling. Don't waste your money. Don't call. Just sit at home and think that it's not going to happen because you may as well make sandwiches while you're waiting by the phone because you're going to be waiting a little while until you change your attitude. And when you change your attitude and you start thinking you're going to get that call, will it happen overnight? Oh, sometimes. Sometimes not. But you've got to stay focused. Remember, your thoughts and your words create the frequency. Your thoughts and emotions and words create that frequency that you want to be on. That is the frequency that you want to be manifesting under. Sound vibrations are on every level of subconscious. So the vibrations of your voice and how you say them will affect your manifestation. I know this is getting deep. Hang in there. We're learning a lot today. And like I said, you may have to listen to this again. So I got to tell you, we're, we're getting ready to close up now. One of the last things I want to leave you with is in Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. That means we are not supposed to form ourselves by what's going on in the world. Many people do, and you see it every day, and especially now. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means daily. We have to set our mindset so we're just not getting so absorbed by what's happening in the world. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that means when you do, when you do renew, renew your mind, You're setting your intentions. You are now in service of others, and that is the will of God. A little deep. One story I'm going to leave with you, and then we're going to 
and for the day. This story, I love this story. There was a man in Germany. He was a freezer repair man for uh, the refrigerated trucks. And he was called out to repair a refrigerated truck that was not working. So he went on the inside and there was a little breeze outside and he didn't, you know, the, the door was ajar and all of a sudden the wind blew the door shut and he was trapped inside this freezer compartment that he was trying to repair because it wasn't working. It frightened him so much that it, it, uh, well, I mean, his imagination started to go crazy. And with that imagination going crazy, what he did was he took out his notebook for his work and he started writing in his notebook, I'm here, I'm all alone, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm sure getting cold. I'm stuck in this freezer compartment and I know it's getting to be night outside. I sure do love my family. Now a little later, he would write, I'm freezing cold. It's freezing cold in here. I do not know what I'm going to do. I cannot be released and I don't think I'm going to make it until the morning. Well, this went on and on all hours of the evening and all hours of the night. The next morning, they opened up the freezer compartment of this truck and they found this poor repairman and he had died overnight and his diary was there and they read it. Well they took him and after having the autopsy the coroner said he has every indication that he froze to death but we don't know how because the freezer compartment was not working. Now that is a prime example of how your thoughts and your words and your emotion can lead you into a situation that you don't want to be in. That is the power of the human mind. This poor man thought he was freezing to death. His thoughts became things. They were not the facts but they became things. Things because he put his emotions into it. He wrote it down. He scripted it. And he perished, freezing to death, in a very, very warm compartment. A freezer compartment that was not working. Align your thoughts, your feeling, your words, your actions and desires. And you will get on that frequency. So, with all of this in ending, I want to ask you, after hearing this, what is your magnificent obsession? What is it that you want to do so much that you just know when you turn on that powerhouse and you flip that power switch that nothing will stop you? And you will become service to others. And it's an automatic. Don't think it's something you have to force because you will not. It is an automatic thing. It will lead you to a wonderful, wonderful place in life. And you can rise above everything that is happening in this world. So I want to leave you today and thank you so much for your time. I think it's very important for you to have these fundamental teachings about the switch and the reticular activating system and frequency and the powerhouse and where it happens. So now the next episodes, we're going to start talking about how you harness that power, how you actually work on that frequency. It's very important. I hope you tune in, but I'm so glad that you did today. So now I wish you peace. I wish you love. Be bold, be blessed, and be brave, my heart. Thank you so much for being here. I love you.
and we'll see you the next time on Secrets, Laws of Attraction. And don't forget, stop on over. Stop on over. www.psychicsecrets.com We'll see you soon. Thanks again. And happy manifesting. Bye for now.